again, it's Mark again with Exotic Car Play Place. And I've had a request to explain how a turbocharger works. Why? Because a turbocharger is a big part of the modern, the modern car design. Um, there's car manufacturers that are using it for fuel economy because then they can get away with a really small engine, mate it to a turbo, they still get decent power but they get a lot better fuel economy. Well the way supercars use it are just for power. They don't worry as much about the fuel economy part. They're actually just trying to extract more power from the engine. And modern cars, for example, Porsche 911 Turbo, the GT2, Ferrari now with the 488 GTB, they're utilizing turbos now for the first time in a long time. Ferrari's using them. So a lot of supercar brands are starting to use turbos or have all along because they they find they work very well. So today I want to explain how a turbocharger works for those. So here we have a turbocharger. This particular turbo actually comes from a Porsche 930 that I have. So this, this turbocharger has obviously seen its better days. Um, that's part of the reason I took it out. But nonetheless, I can give you a pretty good demonstration as to how the turbocharger actually works. So you have a pinwheel here. The pinwheel is connected across. If I turn it on the other side, you'll notice it turning. You'll notice it turning on this side. Okay? Now, the turbocharger generally has two halves to it. And you can see that here. You've got the cold side, and you've got the hot side of the turbo. And they're connected through the shaft here. And there's a shaft that runs all the way through, and I showed you that pinwheel. Now there's blades on both sides, okay? So if you really want to learn how a turbo works, listen up. What we have here is an oil line. This is an oil line that drains the excess oil out of the housing. This is your oil feed in. So you've got oil that you're providing to the bearings, because this actually is not a ball bearing turbo. Some of you have probably heard of the Garrett turbos. Those are ball bearing turbos. This is not a ball bearing. This is called a bushing turbo. So it doesn't have little balls that actually rotate this. It actually has a bushing, so it's a smoother ride. They say you get better life, more reliability. The, the difference is, of course, that the turbo spins, or the ball bearing turbo actually spins more freely when it's healthy, and of course, it, uh, it results in less turbo lag. But the bushing turbo, like you see in this particular turbo, is actually more, uh, more reliable, and you generally get more life out of them. So, you got oil feeding in, that's to lubricate the center shaft there on a bearing, which I just mentioned. Then we turn this over, but you have to drain that oil out. So you've got oil drawing out of the out of that bearing housing. So you have to keep that lubricated. If you don't, this thing will seize up, it'll stop working pretty much immediately. So here we are, back to the two halves. So you've got oil lubrication on the bearing, you've got the hot side. This is where it all starts. This is connected to your exhaust system. You've got your exhaust flow coming, and you've got your connected, your muffler and your exhaust system all connected up here. So your headers connect up on one side, and your muffler connects up on the other side. So as your flow comes out of the headers, okay, your flow comes out of the headers, leaves the other port. So it comes in one way, leaves the other way, okay? So that's basically how a turbo works on the exhaust side. Now that's how you get the wheel turning. Exhaust flowing in, exhaust flowing through it, gets these veins turning. Because it pushes against these little fins, and these fins turn the turbo, thus getting the shaft turning. It all starts at the turbo, at the exhaust side. As you can see, this is very, um, very discolored from the extreme heat that's coming off the exhaust side. Now, that gets the turbo turning. So exhaust gases turn this wheel. Turn, turn, turn. The exhaust is flowing. It's getting this turning. That's why as you get on the throttle, you get more airflow through the exhaust. What ends up happening is it spins us even faster. As it spins faster, because this is coupled on a shaft, these fins then compress air. I got a bad bearing here. That's why it's out of here. But this then compresses the air And you're taking fresh air in, and you're compressing that air, putting compressed air into the motor. So on a common shaft, exhaust uh, gases get the turbo turning. 
Then on the compressor side, or the cold side if you will, you actually get exhaust gases flowing up through, in this case, up through the intercooler and into the intake manifold. So therefore you have a sealed system. This is a compressor really is what this is. It's no different than a supercharger. This really is a compressor and this forces compressed air into the engine, thus adding pressure in the motor. A normally aspirated engine with no turbo will not have compressed air. It has normally uh, your normal atmospheric pressure at 14.7 psi atmospheric pressure air in the engine. This will boost it another X amount of PSI depending on the configuration of the motor and the tolerances that it can take. So that in short folks is how a turbocharger works. Exhaust gases flow through the exhaust system, gets this wheel turning, that's where it starts. Of course it's lubricated in the middle and then on the compressed side, the cold side, it pushes, it's taking intake air, fresh intake air from your uh, air filter gets goes into the cold side and then of course because this is on a common shaft the compressed gases or the compressed air sorry goes into the intake manifold thus um, creating like a, a compressor uh, situation and creating more additional pressure into the intake manifold which therefore adds power you can't deny power that's how a turbocharger works there are other ones too I mean turbochargers like I said this is a bushing turbo there's ball bearing turbos but as well as you know in addition to that you have other turbos that do use antifreeze glycol to assist in cooling the turbos as well this one here is an old 911 it really has no glycol in those cars it's strictly oil cooling on the bearings so there are different setups and it depends on the application but thanks again folks I hope you like this this video, it's all about turbos. So, hope that kind of gave you a little bit of information on how a turbo works and, uh, and maybe understand why turbos are used. So, thanks again. Come back soon and please subscribe. Thanks.